Hello everyone, how's it going? And welcome back to Crendor Rambles. Today I'm going to be rambling about the uh, next round of the NFL playoffs, which will be the championship rounds. But first we need to go back and cover what happened in the divisional round. So if you missed this weekend's playoffs, um, you're going to get spoiled, but I'd imagine you've already seen it anyway. Uh, first things first, we had Atlanta taking on Philadelphia, so the Falcons and the Eagles, and this game went about uh, what I expected it, it, it played out how I expected it to play out, um, but I actually thought the Falcons were going to come out on top uh, over Philadelphia, but that wasn't the case, it was 15-10 to 10 Philadelphia winning this one, and I knew the Eagles defense was going to be good, um, but I thought they played really well, I thought the Eagles defense was uh excellent they held the falcons to only 10 points they held them on a game ending drive to prevent julio jones from getting the touchdown in the end zone and practically winning the game um and then nick Foles, as the quarterback or backup quarterback uh, of the eagles didn't look very good the first half he did a little better the second half though he was you know good enough to get him the win uh they had a great running game uh, and I think that's going to be the key going forward is just the running game, short passes, controlling the clock, and playing good defense. Um, and Atlanta just kind of, they didn't look uh, that good, but I think that's a credit to the Eagles' defense. I think the Eagles' defense really just shut them down. Um, overall, it was an okay game. It was uh, not the most exciting game, but you know what? Philadelphia is the one seed for a reason. Uh, and I think they wanted to prove that. And they also have home field advantage, which is going to be huge uh, for this upcoming uh, NFC Championship game. Um, next up, we had Tennessee, New England. And I was pretty on uh, pretty on point with this game. I said New England was going to win like 31-21, I believe was my prediction. And they won 35-14. So, I mean, pretty close. Um, and it's it's pretty much what I thought was going to happen. New England... Uh, it was down 7 nothing at the start. Tennessee came out, got a touchdown, and then New England just took control. Um, Tom Brady just carving up the defense. Uh, Tennessee just, they just couldn't do anything, man. New England just steamrolled them. And uh, I think that's where the playoff experience really showed and the game planning and just knowing how to play in the playoffs. And I think New England's just been here so much. This is second nature to them. They, like, they take it up to another level. They know it's game time. Like, oh, it's playoff time, man. And they just uh, they just win. So New England, as much as I don't like them winning, they won again. Um, then we had Jacksonville and Pittsburgh, and what a game that was! Oh my God, forty-five to forty-two. I did not predict that at all. I don't think anyone predicted a shootout, especially with the Jacksonville defense. Um, and it uh, it just came down to the end. But Blake Bortles, he didn't play terribly, and that's the key. He's just he's just got a not turn the ball over, and if he doesn't do that, they just run the ball with Leonard Fournette. Um, and Jacksonville still has a good defense. They still got pressure on Roethlisberger. They, uh, the only thing they couldn't do was really keep Antonio Brown under control, but, I mean, no team really does that. It's Antonio Brown. So I still like, I still like the Jaguars' defense, and I'm – extremely excited for this Jaguars Patriots map matchup. This is like, uh, I think it's going to be great. The Jaguars are my team. I want, I want the Jaguars to win the Super Bowl so bad just because they're the meme team. They have <laughs> Blake or, uh, they, people call him baked Bortles. They call him Blake war Bortles, uh, like war turtle. Um, they just, there's so many memes being made out of the Jaguars. I love it. Um, and I just, I want them to win. <laughs> and even though they're a young, exper inexperienced team, they have a really solid defense. They have a good front line that actually has some experienced players on it. Um, and then secondary is solid with uh, Jalen Ramsey, who can just shut down anybody. Um, linebackers are good. They got Miles Jack, who's really good. They just, they have a great defense. And then if the offense can play their part, the Jaguars can actually win and I think the Jaguars have to play their best game yet uh, against New England here but I think it's gonna be a good game I think it's gonna be closer than this uh, Tennessee game uh, I think it'll be not as high scoring as this Jacksonville Pittsburgh game but I'd say it's gonna be 
Um, let's see, Jacksonville, New England. I think it's going to be 24 to 31. Um, and I'd probably say New England will win, but I don't want them to win. So I'm going to not do I'm going to say Jacksonville wins this 20 or 31 to 24. Jacksonville. There it is. Boom. Um, maybe even 28 24. You know what? Let me switch that. 28 24. That's what I'm going with. Uh, Jacksonville wins. Um, and then the final game was the Saints and the Vikings. And that game was kind of insane. It looked like a blowout at first. It was 17 to nothing Vikings. And I was like, oh my God, like the Saints aren't even showing up. Like, this is just bad. Maybe they weren't as good as I thought they were. Uh, that's an old, <laughs> the old coach. There they are who they thought they were or whatever. Um, and uh, then they came back and then they took the lead. And I was like, oh, well, here come the classic Vikings. And everything that I kind of talked about was kind of happening. The the missed field goals, the the Case Keenum, uh, he wasn't playing that great. But then uh, he played well when he needed to. And I think that's the big thing is when he needed to step up, he actually stepped up, which I thought was pretty great. Um, and then just that ending. When the Saints kicked the field goal, I was like, well, there it is. You know, that's like... Uh, maybe the Vikings can get in pl- a field goal shot and try to make a really long one. And then for some reason, that guy on the Saints tried to make a tackle, just like a he tried to hit stick in Madden, and he just completely missed it. And the Vikings just got a touchdown at the end of the game. Uh, it reminded me of, uh, like it wasn't quite a Hail Mary, it was like the catch and run, but it reminded me of like the Packer Hail Mary game. So I kind of know how exciting that is because I've seen that happen with Detroit where the Packers beat Detroit on the final play on a Hail Mary and then where it forced overtime in the playoffs against Arizona and then uh, there was also one against the Giants a Hail Mary that Rodgers got but they weren't as exciting as the game ending ones like the Lions or the Cardinals so uh, I know how exciting that is and it's very exciting so I congratulate the Vikings I think that was a great win And I think they needed that after all their playoff woes and how cursed they are. Um, However, uh, as much as I enjoy that, I still have my bias of like, I'm a Packers fan. So I'm like, I don't, I don't want them to win still. Um, However, it would be kind of crazy to have like the first team to ever play at home for a Super Bowl because the Vikings are actually hosting the Super Bowl. Uh, It's going to be a Super Bowl in Minnesota. And so, if they win, they will actually play at home for the Super Bowl for the first time ever. No team has ever done that, so that's kind of insane. Um, so I guess that would be cool. That's what I'd be looking forward to if that was actually the thing, was just a home team Super Bowl. But aside from that, I want the Eagles to win. But here's the thing with this game, right? Minnesota at Philadelphia. This is going to be a classic old-school NFL game, right? You have two backup quarterbacks going at it. Uh, Both are more of game managers. They can make big plays when they need to, but both are more of like quick pass game manager types. They're not going to try to throw any interceptions or force anything. Uh, Yet two teams are going to be running the ball because it's going to be in the cold. Um, It's going to be outside in Philadelphia. So that's that's another big element. This isn't going to be in a dome or anything. This is outside. Um, And then you got probably two of the best defenses going against each other. That's I think that's the biggest thing. Can I look up the stats? Hold on. Let me... Uh, uh, news. Hold on. Fantasy. NFL stats. Here we go. NFL team stats. I just want to look up the defense. Uh, regular season... Here we go. So total defense, the Vikings were the number one in yards per game allowed with only 275. The Eagles were number four with 306, and the Jaguars were actually number two with 286. So three of the four teams left are uh, some of the four best yards per game allowed defenses in the league. Then it gets a little crazier. The uh, Jaguars actually had the best pass defense. The Vikings had the second best pass defense, and the Eagles... Um, 
had the 17th best. So the Eagles aren't actually that good at pass defense. They've also had some injuries. So I mean, uh, they make up for it though with the run defense because the Eagles have the number one run defense in the NFL. Uh, and obviously number two is the Vikings. Um, so this is, it's actually kind of insane how good like both these defenses are. Like we're going like watching Philadelphia, Minnesota and Jacksonville, um, this weekend is going to be, you're watching three of the best defenses go at it. And I think, um, uh, it's just, it's going to be a defensive battle because of that. Right. I think the defenses are the strengths of all these teams. Um, and obviously New England, uh, if you look at the stats, is number one in offense. You have the number one offense in New England going against the number two defense in Jacksonville. And Jacksonville actually has the best running game in the NFL. And here's the other thing. The Eagles are the third best running team, running offense in the NFL. So you have the number two running defense of the Vikings going against the number three running offense of the Eagles. Um, a lot of crazy, like mirror matchup type stuff going on here. Uh, so I'm excited for this. And as for who I think is going to win in the NFC, I still think <laughs> putting my biases aside, um, I honestly don't know. I think it's 50, 50. And just like I did with the, um, the Saints Panthers game, I think that was another 50, 50 game. And I gave it to the home team because uh, I think being at home gives you that slight edge uh, when you need that motivation. You get the crowd behind you. It's cold. It's you no know, whatever it is. Even uh, even for the Vikings this past week, I think if the Vikings had been on the road for this game, I think um, it might have went the Saints' way. I think just that home being at home can really turn the tide. Of every, I mean, even thinking back um, a few years to the NFC Championship game. Uh, where the Packers were at the Seahawks, as much as I hate to bring this up. Uh, the Packers were destroying the Seahawks. It was like, all right, we're going back to the Super Bowl. This is great. And then they imploded. And it was one of those things where they were at Seattle. The crowd started to get going. The Seahawks started to get going. Everything started going their way. And there was just no energy. And I think um, just that environment uh, really helped push them and give him the extra step to cap off the comeback. And I think a lot of these games uh, go in favor of the home team for that reason. Um, there are exceptions, though. I mean, when the Packers won the Super Bowl, they had to go to Chicago. And they won in Chicago. Granted, they also play in Chicago every year. So probably not as, uh, probably not as bad as, say, uh, going to a team you don't play every year. But... Either way, I think we got some good games this week. I think Jacksonville, New England is going to be really good. And I think Philadelphia, um, Minnesota, I think it's going to be a low-scoring game. I think it's going to be another like 15-10 to 10 game, just like Philadelphia had uh, this past week. But it should be good, man. And to be honest, I don't really, I'm at the point where I don't even care who makes it in the NFC. Um, I like the Eagles because they don't have Carson Wentz, and I think it's cool that uh, their team uh, – in general, is uh, playing really well without him and trying to make it to the Super Bowl and be like, yo, you know, we're not just one guy. Like, which is what the Packers' problem was, was they lost Aaron Rodgers. And it's like, well, we have a lot of holes. But the Eagles are showing like, no, we don't have a lot of holes. We're a well-built team. And I think that's really cool. Um, but the, at the same time, the Vikings have a similar situation where they lost Sam Bradford, although not as... Um, I don't think it's as detrimental as Carson Wentz. I'd because Carson Wentz is a I'd consider him like a top five quarterback at this point. Um, I wouldn't consider Sam Bradford that, but uh, the Vikings are still a well built team. That's why they're here. They're built around their defense. Um, so I think it's going to be a good game. It'll be a good game. Uh, I'm excited to watch it. But when all said and done, <laughs> let's go Jaguars. All right, let's go Jaguars. I want the Jaguars to go all the way. That's all that matters. Blake Bortles, the memes. May the, may the memes reign. Um, and that's that. So thank you for listening. And I will talk next week um, about uh, the, the winners of the championship and who's going to the Super Bowl. So that should be great. I'm sure we'll have some good games. And I will see you then. Okay. 
Okay. See ya.